The news at 530 starts right now. It has been a cold and rainy day out there as we get things started. Meteorologist Mia Montgomery joining us. Mia. Can we expect this to continue out there? Yep, absolutely. In fact, coverage is only going to increase later on tonight and especially into tomorrow morning. So as you're planning out planning out your Monday morning drive, definitely make sure the rain gear is with you. Let's get right to those visibility values outside because this is really the best way to show where we have some of that heavier mist and drizzle in place. The visibility still down in and around the San Antonio area. It has been a very dreary day down to about a mile and a half farther up I 10 near Bernie as well as Kerrville. Now, in terms of the more notable rain out there on your authority radar, we've got some light rain crossing over I-10 up on the northwest side. That's now moving over Northwest Military Highway near Chavano Park, as well as Hollywood Park. That's going to be crossing over 1604 and 281 soon as that works farther up to the northeast. Also have a few more showers that have been taking shape across our western counties along and north of Highway 90 near Brackettville, Concan, Lakey. That is moving up into portions of the hill country. Now, we are expecting more of these showers to get up and running this evening, even more so overnight and into Monday morning. Some pockets of heavy rain, a few non severe rumbles of thunder possible here as well. So we're going to get you the latest version of your feature cast, really timing this out hour by hour for you over the next 24 hours. That's coming up in a little bit warmer temperatures and a few more rain chances continue as well this week. We'll get you those details coming up in just a few, Tim. We will see you then. Meanwhile, we are continuing to stay on top of school closures, especially over at SAI. ISD. Every campus there shut down on Thursday and Friday due to district wide heating issues. The district superintendent, Aimee Akito, says crews have been working throughout the weekend to try to ensure that classes can go on as scheduled tomorrow and that students and staff will be warm at school. The district also says it will keep parents informed about whether or not those schools will close tomorrow. Of course, we will be keeping on top of all those closures and delays between now and tomorrow morning. We will bring you any updates on air and online. You can scan this QR code on your screen for the very latest. New at 530, a woman who was at the wrong place at the wrong time, now in the hospital tonight, recovering from gunshot wounds. It all happened around 4 o'clock this morning at a home on Winter Path near Topper Wine and 1604. Police say that woman actually just sitting on her couch on the first floor when a gunshot came through the second floor and hit both of her feet. She's expected to recover. Police did arrest one person at the house. It's still unclear right now who fired that gun and why. Meanwhile, a man dead following a grisly crash over on the San Antonio's northwest side. It happened just after 3 o'clock this morning, or rather, yes, 3 o'clock this morning on I-10 near Hebner Road. That's where police say a man was thrown from his vehicle on one side of the highway and then landed on the other side of the highway. Officers telling us that man was pronounced dead at the scene. Tonight, friends and family of Savannah Soto gathering to remember that young woman. You may remember she is the 18 year old who was found murdered along with her 22 year old boyfriend and their unborn child. Since then, three arrests have been made in that case. Tonight on the Night Beat, we'll be hearing from Savannah's family about what comes next. To politics now in the race for the White House with just two days to go before the New Hampshire primary. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis announcing he is suspending his presidential campaign. ABC's Morgan Norwood tonight with more from New Hampshire. Tonight, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who had been trailing behind former President Donald Trump and former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, dropping out of the presidential race. The decision coming ahead of Tuesday's consequential primary in New Hampshire. DeSantis making the announcement in this video posted to X. We don't have a clear path to victory. Accordingly, I am today suspending my campaign. DeSantis, who had been stumping in South Carolina weeks ahead of voting in that state, has been more reflective over his campaign over the past few days, but told our Rachel Scott this on Friday. As long as I'm in the hunt, um, that, that tells me that I have uh, that I'm seeing a pathway. The minute I don't, then I'm not just going to do this for, um, you know, just for my health. His comments drawing speculation that he was ready to hang it up in New Hampshire. Nikki Haley wishing DeSantis well. I'm going to say... Ron, he ran a great race. Having said that, it's now one fella and one lady left. And Ron is dropping out, and he 
In doing so, he endorsed us. Now, the two-person race that Nikki Haley and Donald Trump had always framed is officially a showdown, with the former president and his former U.N. ambassador sharpening their attacks. The radical left Democrats are supporting Nikki Haley. What do we know about Donald Trump? He proved when he was president he's good at breaking things. Well, the country's broken. A new CNN University of New Hampshire poll has Donald Trump topping Nikki Haley by double digits. In order to gain ground Tuesday, Haley will look to moderates and independents who could swing the state her way. Donald Trump, meanwhile, leaning on his momentum from his Iowa win, looking to tighten his grip on the lead here in New Hampshire by way of his loyal base. I believe in him. I believe in his policies. And DeSantis says though he's had disagreements with Trump in the past, he's now endorsing him. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Manchester, New Hampshire. And throughout this very important election year, KSAT is your election home. Just head to the Vote 2024 page at KSAT.com. There you'll find all kinds of information to know about local, state, and national elections as we move through 2024. It has truly been an up and down situation outside over the last several days when it comes to the weather. And that change in temperatures can be confusing, not just for us, but for the foliage. Still ahead on the News at 5, what local arborists say we should know about our trees. South Central Texas riding the roller coaster of temperatures last week, and local arborists say now's a good time to check your trees. Avery Everett has some recommendations on how to do that and what one Hill Country City is doing to stay on top of all of it. On this tree here, you've got that branch right there. Broken in half. That's just something waiting to happen. And Chris McCombs says there are more branches across San Antonio on the brink of breaking. Go out and spec. The tree care expert says trees can only take so much. Pretty resilient, but uh, anytime the ice or snow comes, it's, it's not something we're used to here. McCombs is warning people across our area to take an extra close look at their trees. But there's a lot of things you can do to prevent it. Experts say you can start to see for yourself where some of these breaks in your trees might actually be happening. And it all comes down to this. Three simple tips for checking on your trees. First, take a look for any buildup of extra fungi. You should also be looking for any cracks in the tree trunk itself and then also look for missing pieces of bark because that could mean it might break. The biggest concern of trees breaking is power outages. Something the city of Fair Oaks Ranch says is all too familiar. We had um, a significant outage throughout the city. Problems from last year's ice storm push this city to be more proactive. Now it's working with CPS Energy to trim more trees. In order to mitigate some of those uh, trees, you know, freezing and hanging down and, and causing some of the issues that they experienced last year. Generally, when we're going to lose power is a down tree due to neglect. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. In the meantime, if you need a warm place to stay, the city of San Antonio still has warming centers available all over the city. Just scan that QR code on your screen. It'll take you to an article on our website where we have a breakdown of those locations, but we're warming up here soon. We certainly are. Yep, it's been a chilly one out there today because of the cloud cover in place and scenes like this very dreary with the mist and drizzle and some light rain. More notable showers starting to pop up on Authority Radar. We're going to get you another check at that. Plus, more rain chances on the way into this week after the break. Certainly not a nice looking day out there, but me, it is nice to see the rain coming down. Again. It certainly is because we definitely need it. And the good news is multi inch totals in some locations are expected closer to the Alamo City and especially the farther east that you go. By the time all is said and done and we are finished with these rain chances through about the middle of the upcoming week. So let's talk all about it. I want to take you outside to another version of our live cam. You can hardly see outside. I believe this is our camera view from 410 and I-10 on the northwest side. This has been a very common scene this afternoon and now heading into this Sunday evening. We've got that heavier mist in place as well as some drizzle and we like to look at the visibility values whenever we are particularly dealing with that mist and drizzle because sometimes these water particles are very, very fine and they're even falling below the radar beam. So sometimes authority radar doesn't really pick up the whole story. You can see closer to Bernie visibility actually has improved just a little bit from what we were checking about 15 minutes ago. 
ago, but still up by 10. Visibility is down because of that healthier drizzle in place and across a good chunk here of Bear County. But I do want to get you the latest version here and look at your authority radar. We still do have some of that light rain floating across the far northern portions of Bear County, even closing in near the Bulverde area, Timberwood Park, right along Highway 281. That's going to be crossing over the 281 corridor here very shortly. A few more patches of some of that light rain just east of Alamo Heights, Austin Highway, Terrell Hills. That's about to cross over 410 and I-35 approaching Kirby as well as Windcrest. And we are still monitoring that light rain that we have moving through portions of Real County, Northern Uvalde County near Concan. Some of that even closing in on the Bandera area out there in Bandera County. Even more activity though as you take your way closer to the Rio Grande over the mountains of Mexico. This is all associated with this area of low pressure that's now digging into the desert southwest. Now as this low pressure system continues to move closer to the Lone Star State here over the next 24 to 36 hours, what it's going to do for us is allow additional pockets of upper level energy to float across south central Texas, which is why rain chances are going to increase overnight and especially into Monday morning. So here's the latest version of your future cast depicting what the radar could look like here as we continue on throughout this Sunday. This is 9 p.m. for us here in San Antonio along and east of I-35. Some more notable showers possible even out west closer to Del Rio as well as Eagle Pass. Watch what happens as we advance this on. This is midnight tonight. Now across the western half of the area starting to see some more pockets of heavier rain develop. We are expecting a few non-severe rumbles of thunder to move across from west to east. As we sleep, you can see by 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, by the time a lot of us are stepping out for the morning commute and drive to school, mainly along and east of the I-35 corridor, Plan on giving yourself some extra time out the door. Note that roads are likely going to be messy in spots and also take the rain gear with you. Pack the umbrella. Also send it with the kiddos to school. By lunchtime, most of that activity is now out of our area, pushing closer to Houston. Still some cloud cover expected. Maybe a little bit of sunshine across portions of the hill country, the southern Edwards Plateau. We are drier into Monday afternoon. A few isolated showers into Monday evening. But notice we're not finished with the rain chances. Another round of scattered rain gets up and running as we head into the early morning hours of our Tuesday and then we've got about a 40% potential into Wednesday as well. Here's a look at potential rainfall totals again a much needed drink of water here upwards of two to three inches possible closer to the San Antonio area generally lower totals the farther west that you go higher totals the farther east. We will need to monitor for some ponding on area roadways even some excess water buildup in those poor drainage and low lying areas also common trouble spots so something to think about by tomorrow morning there as well. All right, until then it is cold out there. Temperatures have struggled to break out of the upper thirties in many locations. I actually think temperatures could warm a few degrees by the time we're waking up tomorrow. We're going to start off in the mid forties here in San Antonio, 51 degrees at noon, high temperatures tomorrow, warmer in the mid fifties and check out what temperatures do into the upcoming week. Lows in the fifties, maybe upper forties as we head into the second half of the week and into next weekend, but high High temperatures much warmer than what we were dealing with for a good chunk of last week. Upper 60s, low 70s. We dry things out into next weekend, Tim, with more sunshine. It's back to spring. It sure is. All right, we'll take that. Thank you, Mia. All right, there is a party happening in Detroit tonight, Mary. Man, that field over in Detroit, yeah. Ford Field, sounded very loud, but you know, it's very warranted. The divisional round of the NFL playoffs wrapping up today and the Detroit Lions kicked off today with a huge win over the Buccaneers to advance to the NFC Championship game as their magical season continues. Plus the UTSA men's basketball team and FAU put on a show this afternoon here in San Antonio. We'll show you the highlights of the Roadrunners near upset after the break. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. The NFC Divisional Round Playoff showdown between the Detroit Lions and Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking center stage at Ford Field this afternoon. The game tied at three in the second quarter until Jared Goff links up with John Jay alum Josh Reynolds wide open in the end zone for the nine yard touchdown. Lions in front 10 to three. Detroit controlled momentum for the majority of the first half, but Baker Mayfield went 92 yards on seven plays, capping off the drive with a two yard TD pass 
pass to Kate Otten to tie things up again. Now let's see how this one played out. The Lions scored three second half touchdowns and Detroit's defense picked off Mayfield twice as the Lions advanced to the NFC Championship game with a 31 to 23 win. They'll face the top seeded 49ers next Sunday at 530. The other divisional round game today is currently in progress. The Buffalo Bills hosting the Kansas City Chiefs. No score yet in this one, but we'll have the highlights tonight on instant replay. The winner will play the Baltimore Ravens in the AFC Championship next Sunday at 2. Well, what CJ Stroud put on display in his rookie campaign was beyond his 22 years of age. Stroud's historic year helped the Houston Texans capture the AFC South Division crown. And with Stroud under center, the Texans' ceiling felt sky high entering the NFL playoffs. Although yesterday, Houston reached the end of the road after suffering a 34 to 10 defeat in the AFC Divisional round to MVP favorite Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. Stroud and the Texans offense failed to crack the goal line and despite going into halftime tight at 10 the Ravens dominated the second half scoring 24 points unanswered. I think our team learns that hey, we know we we're right there at halftime right so they know they were toe to toe with a really good team right and I hope our team just understands that moving forward right at all costs you got to finish right and you want to continue to move forward, continue to play in big games. It'll always be about executing and finishing. I'm going to enjoy this offseason, man. I'm not going to lie. It's been a long year of my life. Uh, I've been through a lot of ups and downs, on the field, off the field. and I'm just super, super blessed, man. I do everything. Like I told you all before, pressure is a privilege, and it's hard. Like it's, The stand up here is, it may seem easy out there, but it's hard. You know, I work really hard. Stroud definitely makes looking like uh, playing a quarterback look easy. All right, Houston heads into the offseason with plenty to look forward to, but they were sure to say this season was not a moral victory. The UTSA men's basketball team hosting number 23 FAU this afternoon. The Roadrunners have fared well against nationally ranked opponents, taking 13 ranked Memphis to OT earlier this month, although unable to pull off the upset. First half, Jordan Ivy Curry helping UTSA's hot start from long range. The Roadrunners up 10. Ivy Curry now off the transition, finds Masal Duff trailing, and Duff finishes off the glass. UTSA led by four at halftime. And in the second half, several lead changes. Ivy Curry takes it himself for two of his 38 points. And it would take overtime to hash this one out. And FAU took over the game from there as the Owls win it in OT 112 to 103. Ivy Curry netted a career high 38 points for UTSA and Christian Tucker recorded a double double. John L. Davis led the Owls with 34 points. The 7 and 13 Roadrunners fall to 1 and 5 in AAC play. The 10 and 8 UTSA women's basketball team fell on the road at FAU 54 to 53 this afternoon. The Roadrunners are now 4 and 3 in conference action. Senior Kyra White notched a double double for UTSA in the loss. A battle of two teams with only seven wins led to a last minute gasp as the San Antonio Spurs were able to beat the Washington Wizards last night. Victor Wembanyama finished with 24 points and eight rebounds. And in the month of January, he's almost averaging a double double. After getting win number eight, Wemby had mentioned that his legs felt heavy in this game against the Wizards, to which he clarified how rest has become a weird feeling to him. You know now, two days without playing feels like a week, and it's now that my body is changing, it's adapted to rhythm, so it's yeah. You know, got, just gotta now. Hopefully, I can I can play every game from now on, so it's shouldn't be an issue no more. But it's uh, definitely something I gotta. All right, the Spurs' next matchup will be against Philadelphia tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Head coach Greg Popovich said Wembenyama's minutes restriction could be lifted sometime this week. All right, tonight on Instant Replay, we're recapping an eventful week in pro football, the NBA and beyond. In our press box segment, we'll discuss Jerry Jones' decision to stick with Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy, and we'll take a deeper dive into some controversial topics surrounding the Cowboys. It all begins tonight at 11.
Lots to talk about as always. We'll see you then. Have a good one. Thank you. We'll be right back. That's going to do it for the news at 530. We hope to see you back here for the night beat tonight at 10. Until then, stay warm and be safe out there.